The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven. The saints who followed the footsteps of Christ, and since for love of him they shed their blood, now they exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Today the church honors the memory of 120 Chinese martyrs under the title of Augustine Zhao Rong and his companions. These were Chinese martyrs, both Chinese as well as missionaries that were martyred in China between 1648 and 1930, so over a period of, of three centuries, who uh, bravely went and proclaimed the gospel, those who received the gospel and proclaimed it in their homes and in their families and their lives, and they were martyred. Now, Augustine himself, Augustine Zhao Rong, was a soldier, and he had the job one day to escort a bishop on his way to his execution, which he did. He was his prisoner. And he was so impressed by the courage of what he saw with that bishop that he himself became a Christian, was ordained a priest, and then was later martyred. And so he leads this group of martyrs uh, in, the, in name of, of these 120 companions, and we honor them in our Mass today. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness, the times we have not had the courage to proclaim the good news with our words and our lives, and ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who in your wonderful providence have strengthened your church through the confession of the martyrs, St. Augustine, Zhao, and companions, grant that your people, faithful to the mission entrusted to it, may enjoy ever greater freedom and witness the, tr the truth before the world. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the farther they went from me, sacrificing to the Baals and burning incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed, my pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God and not man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper in your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the lands of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel passage, we have to read in context of what we've heard earlier in the week, throughout the week. We've been listening to the actions of Jesus, and we've been given a glimpse of the process of his call to discipleship, the call to ministry. In Tuesday's gospel, after he drove out the demon and cured the mute man, Jesus said to those who were gathered with him, Ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for the harvest. Prayer is the first step in discerning what is our call to mission, our call to vocation in our lives, how we are going to serve the Lord. Then in yesterday's gospel, after prayer, Jesus then appointed the 12. Discernment does not end with just prayer but it continues to docility. So Jesus prayed, discerned who the 12 would be, and then he called the 12, and they had to answer yes or no. Would they be docile to the call or not? The 12 fortunately said yes to the call. Now in today's gospel, Jesus instructs the 12 how they are to live their vocation and their mission, how they are to evangelize, what they're supposed to be doing. And Jesus gives them two kinds of instruction, both a negative instruction and a positive. He begins by laying out what they are to avoid. They are to live and conduct themselves with simplicity of life. Take no money. They're not to bring basic travel items, no second tunic, sandals, or walking stick. In other words, they are to depend on God and not on their own efforts. Not to take that, what he said literally, but the, the spirit of what Jesus was saying, live a simple life. Live as if your life depended upon God. They are to witness to everybody they meet their complete trust in God. And they are to be a prophetic sign. They are to be a witness to seeking first the kingdom of God. Then on the positive side, Jesus instructs them to seek out faith-filled people. In each town, they are to find people who receive their teaching with faith and to express their faith through gospel values like kindness and hospitality and love. And they are to bring Christ's message to the homes they visit. And they are to be witnesses of God's peace in that home and not worry about whether or not the people are going to reject them or accept them. Not to worry about that. But just to bring God, to be at peace in their heart and just proclaim the message. So prayer, discernment, evangelization. This is a process that all those Chinese martyrs followed that we celebrate today in our liturgy. And this is what each of us are called to as disciples of Jesus. It is through prayer that we develop a relationship with Christ. It's the way we learn to recognize his voice then it's recognizing his voice that we will hear his call and then we must be docile to the voice we hear docile to his commission for us what has he called each of you to do as part of his a part of salvation history 
part of the mission of the church. The discipleship, to evangelization, and then finally, through the scriptures and the teaching of the church, we learn how we are to live as disciples. Our very lives, in all aspects of our life, must proclaim the gospel. Because you may be the only gospel someone encounters. They may not read a word of the scriptures, but by looking at you, that's what happens. And that's what happened to St. Augustine Zhao Rong. He watched the heroism and the courage of this bishop that he was leading to his martyrdom. And he was so impressed with that. That bishop was an expression of the gospel, of surrender to God. And it so moved him that he became a Christian, became a priest, and a martyr himself. And now inspires millions of Chinese Catholic Christians by his courage. So you see what your example can do by you being a gospel by how you live your life. Now, most of us are not going to travel off to far off missions, but we are called to discipleship in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our businesses, in our communities. That's where we are called to discipleship. Everyone is in need of the healing power of Christ. Everyone is in need of the mercy of God in their life. So we've got a lot to do because you're going to run into people that need all those things. And the gospel has the power to set people free from anxiety, from sickness, from fear, to bring the peace of Christ to every soul. And we are the ones being sent out with that message. And we're sent out with the power of the word of God behind us to bring peace to people's lives. We are called to freely give to others what we have received without expecting anything in return. There's no quid pro quo among disciples. We give freely. We give freely without expecting anything. And this shows other people how free that we really have become. We become free people through living the gospel with simplicity of heart by trusting that God will give us our daily bread. We live that freedom. When we become disciples of Jesus, we are no longer bound to earthly things. They no longer tie, our, tie us in knots. But through simplicity of life, we have become Christ-centered and heaven-bound. With our eyes on the prize, our eyes at the finish line, as St. Paul writes. Prayer, discernment, evangelization discipleship. This is the model for our lives. This is the model of the true disciple of Jesus. We come before the Lord with trusting hearts and place before the Lord our prayers. And what are your prayers? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our prayer.
We pray for the increasing numbers of people suffering with the coronavirus. We pray for all of our sick, including Eric Waring. The Lord will bring healing to them. We pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the souls of Gloria and Leopoldo Pira, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all of our deceased relatives and friends, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for Mary's intercession with our prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John, his assistant bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, those consecrated to your service and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.